Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. God bless you. I hope everyone is doing okay. Uh, I was a little bit bored and I thought, hey, let's do another live show today. Hi guys, can you hear me? Is my sound loud and clear? Tell me if you can hear me so we can start today's live show. All right, thank you. Thank you for the one, guys. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed today's earlier live show about the historical disasters of Islam and how we refuted the many claims of Muslims. I think it was good, right, guys? I think it was good. Right, right, right. So what are we going to talk about today, guys? Today we're going to talk about the true face of Islam. And we're going to show you from the Islamic sources what the real agenda is of Muhammad, what the real agenda is of Islam. What is the real face of Islam behind the mask that the Muslims have been trying to show you, especially here in the West, you know, especially for the non-Arabs and non-Arabic speaking people, Muslims or even non-Muslim Arabic speaking people. People like you and me who live here in the West who have no clue maybe about the real face of Islam. So <clears throat> before we start, let us do a nice prayer like always guys. So that our beloved Lord and Savior can guide us through today's live show yet again. So if it's okay and I will ask you to Pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, please forgive us our sins and guide us to forgive others who might curse us or persecute us because we are followers of our Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, give us the courage and wisdom in this live show again to overcome lies and deceptions. Enfold us in your arms, Lord. We are nothing without you. We can't help ourselves without you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Fill us with your spirit that we might reflect your light within this dark world, Lord. And that we speak your word with boldness and draw others to your feet by telling the truth. We ask this through your beloved son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, give us the courage today and always to do Whatever needs to be done, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we said, on this live broadcasting, guys, we will have the opportunity again to show the real face of Islam, like we mentioned earlier. And we're going to go deep in the Islamic sources to show you that Muslims have been lied about their agenda they have been trying to show you how peaceful islam is and how beautiful islam is right but we, oh boy we are going to refute that today again last but not least when i finish my teaching we have a nice small q a session i don't think we were going to stay very long now because we already have done a earlier live show today but we'll try to have a nice time together. In other words, in the Q&A session, you can ask me questions about today's teaching. And I will try again to answer the questions as far as I can. Hopefully, there will be also Muslims who will call us live on Skype for a nice and respectful discussion. Maybe they have the knowledge and the courage to refute me. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Guys, don't forget to <clears throat> subscribe. And smash that like button you know how youtube works by now don't also forget to click on the notification bell to receive notification when we go live or upload new videos before we start guys someone made this nice background picture for me on discord i saw it today so i was like hey let me use it and show my appreciation towards our beloved friend who made this for me so thank you god bless you yeah this is me guys this is how i look 
on my good days, right? You see? <laughs> Man, I, feel, I really feel tough right now, you know? Reminds me of uh, one of those Marvel movies or DC comic movies or whatnot. So yeah, it gives me it gives me hope, right, to keep doing this. <laughs> so yeah, I look I look tough, aren't I? Yeah, where's my weapon? Well, my weapon, my friend Santori, my weapon is my is the truth. I have Jesus with me, who is the truth, right? That's my biggest weapon that I use. Is that enough for you? Well, I mean, I don't own an AK-47 like the Muslims, right? I have Jesus. I mean, what do I need more? <laughs> Looks like Michael Jackson. Wow. Mm. Are you okay? Any are you okay? That kind of stuff. Mm. All right, guys. Uh, today in our early live show, we mentioned we mentioned how Muslims love to tell us that Muhammad o only did defensive battles oh boy that was not true we refuted that so let us go through that again just as a small introduction did prophet muhammad lose any battle and are there any sources about this we mentioned today that there were two battles in the beginning that muhammad lost badly that the first one that he lost was in 625 in the battle of uhud against the pagan right and he also lost the battle against the roman empire in 629 as you see and he tried to invade and raid the christian lands uh, and it was called the the battle of muta right he tried to go after the yellow blondie women right the yellow blondie women so let us go and discuss more about that. Now, Muslims say, you know, Islam is so peaceful. It's so tolerant. Oh, boy, you need to join Islam, right? You need to join Islam because, you know, it allows all kind of, uh, all kind of religions to participate on this planet. There's no problem with Christianity. You can stay a Christian if you like. That's what they said, right? That's what they said, right? But we know how big the deception is. Don't forget that Muslims who actually know is true Islam, uh, for them, you know, they always see talking to you, even talking like a art of war, right? An art of war is nothing but deception, right? To win a war, you need to use deception. And that's what they do. You know, they deceive the media, they deceive the, the West, you know, to come here and take our women with numbers, you know. And we mentioned um, the three stages of jihad before, right? Stage one, when uh, they are very uh, small number, they use deception, they use taqiyya, they try to... Uh, show you how beautiful Islam is by going to abrogated verses like this one here that you see in front of you, right? And if we go to stage three, let, let me skip stage two, but if you go to stage three, when they have actually the power, they gain control over the land where you live, then there is no place for you as a pagan. If you don't convert to Islam, you will be killed. If you are a Jew or a Christian, they will force jizya on you, right? You don't pay jizya, you, you either leave or they will kill you. They will kill you and take your women and your money, right? They will force first jizya on you. You don't want to pay? Just go. You don't go, we, we kill you, we, we take your women and your wealth, right? Then the mask comes off. Exactly, Michelle. Exactly, right? So, if we study this ayah, guys, that you see here in front of you, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah 256, this is one of the most commonly used ayahs by Muslims to show how beautiful Islam is. There is no compulsion in religion. It's okay, man. 
be a Christian, it's okay, it's, be a Jew, it's okay for us, Islam is tolerant, which is a lie. People who actually studied the Quran and studied Islam, they know that this ayah is still in the Quran. Yes, it's still in the Quran, as you see, you can see it, right? You can read it, but Muslims cannot use it anymore, right? Muslims can't use this ayah that you see here in front of you anymore, right? Because it has been abrogated. It has been cancelled, right? You cannot use this as a Muslim anymore, right? So they have to use taqiyya, use an abrogated verse like this one to show you how beautiful and peaceful Islam is, how tolerant Islam is. Now I'm going to prove to you guys, I'm going to prove to you that this ayah has been abrogated. Muslims cannot use this. They do because they know most of the people have no clue about Islam. This is also the way to invite poor, illiterate victims to Islam. I mean, look how many people sometimes become Muslims, become converts in this satanic cult. Why? Because they have no clue about the real Islam, right? They have no clue about abrogation. What's abri abrogation? What? Right? Abrogation? There's no abrogation. Oh, there is, my friend, there is. If we go to the tafsir, guys, this is altafsir.com official Islamic website owned by the Kingdom of Jordan, owned by the King himself of Jordan, right? Chapter 2, Al-Baqarah, same chapter, same ayah. If we go to Azbab al-Nazul, Bay al-Wahidi, right? Highly respected tafsir. Azbab al-Nazul means the reason why this ayah came down. Azbab al-Nazul, by al-Wahidi. Now, if we read this ayah like this, you have, you know, it's, it's a lot of words, Right, a lot of words, but let me show you a trick. If we go here to page two, there's a page two here in the bottom. If we click on that, let me give you also the link, guys. We don't have admins. Do we have admins? Oh, we have one. Ah, oh, that's great. Pray for our admins, guys. Keep them in your prayers. Keep me in your prayers because. <clears throat> we need our health, we need our safety to keep doing what we do almost every day. So if we go to the page 2, I clicked on page 2, you will see and uh, read with me here. This was, so this ayah, this was before the messenger of Allah, Allah is praying on him. There's nothing called Allah bless him, it's always Allah praying on him. Was commanded to fight the people of the book. Now who are the people of the book? These are the Jews and the Christians, right? Ahlul Kitab. We are the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, because Allah supposedly, so-called Allah, sent down the Torah and the Injil upon us, right? So that's why we are called people of the book. So this was before the Messenger of Allah was commanded to fight the people of the book. Where can we find that? In chapter 9. That we will show you later. But then Allah, but then, always a then. But then Allah saying, there is no compulsion in religion, right? As we read in the ayah. Was, what? Do you see it? Uh-oh. The ayah was abrogated. Uh-oh. I mean, this is not my tafsir, guys. Don't blame me. Did you catch it? So Muslims cannot use the ayah anymore. And the Prophet was commanded. So Allah is commanding Muhammad. To fight the people in the book in Surah Repentance. What Surah is that? That's chapter 9, Surah at tawbah Which also has the nickname, the chapter of the Sword of Allah and Muhammad. That's the other nickname for Surah Repentance. Surah at tawbah So, the ayah, guys, let me go back. This ayah has been abrogated as you just read. I mean, it's in front of you. Come on, man. Right? Muslims, you cannot use taqiyya with me. It doesn't work on me. Sorry. Maybe I'm some poor, illiterate Christians, ignorant Christians, maybe it's work, it will work. But you can't use the ayah with me anymore, right? I mean, how many times have you uh, seen Mimi Hijab, Ali Da'wah? Uh, what was that other guy? Shushu? Shamshi? Shushu? What was his name again? I forgot his name. How many times have you seen him debating Christians 
uh, on Speaker's Corner talking about this very... Uh, and I've been uh, invited to many live shows like the one on Hatun, Tash and Daniel. Remember Daniel and Hatun from TCCI? I mentioned this on that live show because they have put many hours with that Shushu guy who claims to be an Imam, a Sunni Imam, saying that there is no, nothing called abrogation. You liar, you deceiver. Shamsi, well, yeah, Shamsi, that's his name. Lying about the Quran, using taqiyah. Because he has no power, he need to use deception. Right? And when Muslims are at war, and they are always at war with us, deception and war go hand in hand. Right? Deception. Taqiyah. And the proof is in front. So Muslims stop lying. Taqiyah doesn't work anymore. Don't give us abrogated verses. Like we said, as you see, it's still in the Quran. But Muslims cannot use this anymore. Allah is the one who abrogated this one. We know it's Muhammad, you know. Because he wanted to attack the Romans. Right? He wanted to expel the Jews. Right? In the last chapter of the Quran, in the last chapter of the Quran, he wanted to expel the Jews. This is why chapter 9 abrogates this ayah. Chapter 9 on itself, guys, abrogates more than 120 peaceful ayahs. Yes, you got it. You hit it right. Chapter 9 abrogated more than 120 peaceful Meccan period ayahs. Did you catch it? 120. There's no peace anymore in the Quran, guys. It's gone. It's finito. There's only peace between Muslims. Oh no, wait a second. Shia and, uh, and Sunni curse each other left and right. right. Even among themselves, there is no peace. There is no love. There is no love in Islam, guys. It's nothing but a violent, hateful, cursing religion. Remember the hadith where Muhammad wakes up every morning and curses such and such persons? Remember the hadith? Every morning Muhammad woke up, he used to curse people left and right. And this is why Muslims in chapter 1 always repeat the curses of Allah towards Jews and Christians. Right? They love to repeat the curses of Allah in chapter 1, Al-Fatiha. Right? So we showed you. Take notes, guys. I gave you the link. Let me put it again. Use this whenever a Muslim shows you this ayah. And says there is no compassion in religion. You filthy liars. La ikraha fid deen. Oh no, there is no compulsion. La ikraha fid deen. You filthy liars. Right? And then when they have they are the majority, they will come with this nonsense. Islam will dominate the world. Right? Then they take off the mask, like someone said in the text. And they come out and play, right? Right? That's how they play. You know, they're always at war. They even when they go asleep, they, they are dreaming about war with us, right? Struggling, jihad, right? They call it struggle, but we know what real meaning of jihad is. So imagine guys, as you see in front of you, I googled a nice background picture. Uh, the Reconquista Wars with the Spaniards. Here you see the Christian Spaniards and here you see the Muslims. Right? Beautiful painting as you see. A lot of violence, but yeah. That truly happened. Right? That actually happened. So ask yourself, what if Islam had conquered Europe? You know what would happen? Take a wild guess. Someone is saying Deus Volt. <laughs> yeah. Right? Imagine if they actually could have captured the whole Europe. You would have been living under Sharia law as a Christian. Paying Jizya. Jizya was, would have been forced on you. If you don't want to pay Jizya, you would have been expelled as a Christian only. If you were a pagan, an atheist, you would have been killed anyway. If you don't accept Islam. 
So they give you a chance, accept Islam. You don't want to accept Islam. Okay, you're a Christian. That means you need to, to pay jizya, which is not a tax, by the way. They call it a tax. We know it's not a tax. It's basically nothing but mafia protection money. So, and if you don't want to pay, you have to leave the land. And if you don't want to leave the land and you don't want to pay jizya, they kill you and they take your women and money. Right? So imagine. And as you see here in front of you guys, look how, till, how far they reached. You see the yellow? Those are the Muslim conquered lands. So they reach all the way to the north of Spain. You see that? Crazy. So imagine if they would have reached all the way there, right? I, I, I mean, I can't, I can't uh, see it before me, no? That means if they have conquered whole Europe, the whole world would have been under Islam by now. So thank the Lord that the Spaniards fought them back. And drove them back, right? The Caliphate, it was called the Caliphate of Cordoba. You see that? Is another uh, map. Look how far they reach, guys. Right? The green area is was conquered at that time by the Muslims. Right? And they called it the Andalus. And 1036 AD, you see that? The Andalus. I actually challenged a guy on YouTube, a Muslim guy, and he's also sitting on Discord. He calls himself, uh, or his project, his YouTube channel, the Andalusian Project. He's a convert to Islam. He has his own uh, Discord server that he calls the Caliphate, right? He, he's there he is the caliph and he has a lot of uh, minions underneath him and every Christian that goes there gets the role uh, as dhimmi they call you a dhimmi as Christian right <laughs> you're actually a dhimmi on their discord server imagine so that this coward never accepted my challenge right for a debate I even told him you know, let's do it on Skype, one against one. And he never accepted my challenge for the debate. I wonder why. Take a wild guess, right? And later, one of our friends on Discord showed me that he was actually married to a Muslim lady. So we know why poor victims who become Muslims, why they are becoming Muslims. So he fell for the trickery, you know. He fell in love with a Muslim lady and to, you know, marry her, you, he needed to become a Muslim first. So we know why people become Muslims, right? It's ignorance. It's falling in love with the wrong person. Yeah. Scared because you're an Arabic speaker, right? Yeah. Well, what can we do? Let's blame Allah for being an Arabic speaker. You know, Allah deceives or misguides whoever he likes. So he misguided me, you know. I became a Christian. <laughs> he misguided me. And now because he misguided me, I'm exposing his fake prophet and his fake satanic cult. So blame Allah for that, Muslims. I didn't do it. Allah did it, according to the Quran. So if you go to chapter 5, guys, if we go to chapter 5, ayah 33 from Surah Al-Ma'idah, we can read The only reward of those who make war upon Allah and His Messenger and strive after corruption in the land will be that they will be killed or crucified. I mean, Muhammad, is, you know, it's not enough to kill us. We need also to crucify us. What about the torture? Or have their hands and feet on alternate sides cut off? I mean, what is this, man? This is Allah? This, this is religion? This is God? Or will be expelled out of the land. Such will be their degradation in this world. And the hereafter, theirs will be an awful doom. I mean, 
it's not enough to kill us. You know, you will crucify us. You, you will cut off the, our hands and feet. I mean, guys, this is also, this counts for me. People like me, people like Christian Prince who are causing fitna, right? We are basically causing fitna by exposing Islam. We are insulting the Prophet. Take beer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You see the, the tolerance for Muslims? You see the, the beautiful, peaceful Islam? I mean, this is not my, my book. This is the book of the Muslims. This is their Quran. Don't blame me for reading your Quran. Right? Lord have mercy. So we mentioned, guys, we mentioned chapter 9, remember? How chapter 9 abrogated chapter 2, ayah 256. There is no compulsion in religion. Basically, chapter 9 is around this period, right? And we mentioned also the battle of Mut'ah, how Muhammad lost and Allah kept silent. Where was Allah when Muhammad needed Allah? Muhammad lost heavily from the Romans. Those are the Romans who defeated, the Christian Romans who defeated Muhammad and his army. Someone said, Deus Volt? <laughs> well, yeah, this is it, right? So Muhammad lost when he attacked the Roman Empire, right? He, he really was manhandled here and basically he sent a letter to the Roman king guys, to the Roman Empire, the Emperor, saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim min Muhammad Rasulullah. So he sent this letter, right? This is from Muhammad, right? Bismillah, in the name of Allah, right? This is basically quoting the Quran, right? Then he says in the same letter that you, you see here, he says to the Roman Emperor, become a Muslim or else, فأسلم تسلم, فأسلم تسلم. become a Muslim, convert to Islam, then you will receive peace. So convert, in other words, convert or else, there is no other choice for the Roman Emperor. And what did the Roman Emperor do? He really gave him a nice lesson, right? He gave him a nice lesson. Convert or die. You know, the Roman Emperor, the Roman Emperor thought, please, Muhammad, come at me. Come at me. You're, you're sending me such letters? Convert or else? Come at me. Let's see what happened. And we know what happened. History tells us what happened, right? Right? Oh boy, oh boy, right? So, as we mentioned earlier, this is in the same time as chapter 9, ayah 28. Why? He, from this moment on, Muhammad said in the Quran, all you believe, this Muslims, all you believe, the pagans, the idolaters are unclean, right? That includes us too, the Jews and the Christians. So let them not come near the Masjid al-Haram, right? The near al-Masjid al-Haram. This is a really bad translation. To the Masjid al-Haram. So that's Mecca, right? Basically. If you fear poverty, so if you fear that, that you become poor from the loss of their merchandise, so if you are, because you know, you, Muslims are not allowing, Muhammad in this case, are not allowing the Romans, for example, the Jews, the Christians, not to do basically uh, doing markets, right? Coming to their markets, dealing goods, right? You give me a horse, I give you a cow, stuff like that, right? Merchants, yeah. Merchants came, used to come to Mecca, to Medina, right? Especially in this case, Mecca. So, Non-Muslims were not allowed to enter Mecca anymore, especially not come near Masjid al-Haram, which is the Grand Mosque, right? That you now see with the Kaaba. So, if you are fearing to get poor, Allah preserves for you of His bounty, if you will. 
Lo, Allah is nowhere wise. So here, Muhammad saying, don't you know? Don't be afraid, right? Don't don't be afraid to get poor. Why? Because the solution is in the next verse. What is the solution? You only think you have only one thing to do, Muslims, according to Muhammad. Fight against such of those who have been given the scripture. Those are us, right? Who are the people of the book? Ahlul Kitab. That's us, people of the book, the scripture. As believe not in Allah nor the last day, and forbid not what Allah has forbidden by His Messenger, and follow not the religion of truth, which is Islam, until they pay the jizya. This is really a bad translation, man. Pick thal youth scumbag. Hmm. Let's see what Mauluzi says. False translation. That's not what the Arabic says. Again, tribute. It's not tribute. It's jizya, liars. Why are, the, why are the people lying, man, in their translation? Do you have shame, Muslims, when you translate the Quran of Allah? Do you have any shame? Clearly not. You, they don't. Let's see about this translation, guys. You see here, finally we found a closer translation. See? Until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. And the Arabic says, عَنْ يَدٍ وَهِمْ Right? They have to pay the jizya and they must feel small, humiliated. Right? Subdued. You see? This is the tolerance and the peace of Muslims towards us. Jizya is nothing but a mafia protection money. Right? You don't pay jizya, you die. We take your women. We take your women as sex slaves and we kill you, right? It's on you. Take it or leave it, right? So Muslims will say, hey, well, there is a context behind it. Well, we just gave you the context. 28 and 29 are showing you the context. But you know, we can go to the tafsir. This is Ibn Kasir. This is Ibn Kathir 4, 9, 28, 29. Saying exactly the same that I just told you, right? So we are, we are called not pure. So we are not, we are filthy. We are not allowed to come near Masjid al-Haram. Remember? So, and if we continue, let's see. Oh, you believe very really the mushrikeen are impure. We are, we are filthy. You know, impure is basically a sugar-coated word. We are basically filthy, right? Very filthy. So this is why we are not allowed to come near Masjid al-Haram, right? And if we go much further into the tafsir, it's very long tafsir. So here, and if you feel poverty, Allah will enrich you out of his bounty. Muhammad bin Ishaq commented, the people said, our market, so the Muslims, these are the Muslims saying, look what they're saying, complaining to Muhammad. Our markets will be closed, our commerce disreputed, and what we earned will vanish. So they are complaining to Muhammad. Oh Muhammad, what have you done? What have you done, Muhammad? We will get poor, our markets will be closed because we can't do trading with the Romans. We cannot trade with the Jews. We cannot trade anymore with the pagans because you are not allowing them to enter Mecca anymore, right? Did you catch it? This is not my tafsir, this is Ibn Kathir. The Ibn Kathir. Right? So Allah will give you the bounty, right? So don't worry, be happy. Allah will enrich you from the bounty. What is the bounty? Jizya from the Jews and the Christians. Ma mafia protection. Money. So this ayah means feel sub themselves subdued. Wun sagirun. This will be your compensation for the closed market that you feared will result. Therefore, Allah compensated them from for the losses they incurred because they severed ties with idolaters. So they are not doing trading anymore with pagans, with the Jews and the Christians. By the jizya they earned from the people of the book. Did you catch it? They are getting the money from us. And that's a large amount of money, right? Similar statement were reported from Ibn Abbas. So, you know, all these people are reporting. Even the cousin of Muhammad, Mujahid. 
You know, these are our companions, right, of Muhammad. You see? This is why Allah compensated Muslims for their losses by the amount of mafia protection money, jizya, which comes from jaza, punishment, right? The root word is jaza, penalty, punishment. That's where, where jizya comes from. That they took from the people of the dhimma. Who are the dhimma? Those are the Jews and the Christians. Remember when I said, you are a dhimmi? So you are not even... Worthy to be called a Christian or a Jew anymore. You are nothing but a dhimmi. One day are in control. This is the true face of Islam guys. One day are controlling your land. They conquered your land. Right? They are forcing jizya on you. And you are becoming a third class citizen. Not even a second. But you are nothing but a third class citizen. Even the animals. Even the dogs are on a higher level than you right to order to fight the people of the scripture until they give the jizya the mafia protection money did you catch it and if we scroll down guys <clears throat> in this same tafsir uh, let me give you the link you will see even the real pact of omar the real pact of Omar, the pact that Omar made with the Christians, it's here underneath, right? You see, and they feel themselves, before I go there, you are, as a Christian and Jew, you must feel disgraced. Guys, take notes, please. Are you with me, guys? Are you still with me? Give me one if you're with me. Guys, give me one if you're still with me. I hope I'm not putting you asleep. So, you must feel disgraced humiliated and belittled as a Christian. Christians, this is your future under Islamic rule. Who, who did say Deus Volt? <laughs> right? Right? So, be sure if Islam takes over, this will happen to you. You will feel disgraced. You feel humiliated by Muslims and you will be belittled. Right? Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhamma. They are not even allowed to honor you or elevate you above other Muslims. You are nothing but a dog. You are lower than a dog. For they are miserable. We Christians are miserable, disgraced and humiliated. Muslims recorded from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, Do not initiate salam to the Jews and the Christians. Don't greet them first. Guys, how many times have you seen, especially people who are on Potok like me or on Discord, when Muslims enter, Muslims who know their Islam, they will never say Salaamu Alaikum to a Christian. Why? Because their Prophet said this. Don't say Salaamu Alaikum to the Christians and the Jews. This is why they will never greet you with peace. Only the ignorant Muslims will give you a hand and say, Hello, peace be upon you. Right? Maybe those Muslims who, hear, who are here born in the West, right, listening to music and uh, go clubbing, they have no clue about the true face of Islam, about the true face of the fake prophet of Islam, who was nothing but a warlord, right? A hateful person who was nothing but a kingpin of his time. And if you meet, look what Muhammad, if we continue, look what Muhammad is saying. And if you meet any Christian or Jew, any of them, any Jew and Christian in a road, force them to the, its narrowest alley. This is why the leader of the faithful Umar ibn al-Khattab demanded his well-known conditions be made with the Christians. You see, this is the pact of Umar, guys. The, here, from here on, all the way down, this is the pact of Umar that is highlighted. So when you are under the pact of Umar, you are continued humiliation, degradation and disgrace. You are going to be humiliated until the end of times. Right? Ensured. Did you catch it? This is the pact of Omar. So let me give you the link again, guys. When you debate a Muslim about the pact of Omar, from here on, when you see the name Omar, 
all the way down. Look how long the pact is, guys. I don't want to go through all of it, but basically, as a Christian, you have to wear belts around your waist, like the Nazis. Remember what the Nazis forced on the Jews in World War II? The yellow David star. So, you have to wear, um, basically wear a belt like the Jews. You have to wear belts around your waist to be recognized. Hey, look, that's, there's a Christian. Go and humiliate him. Go disgrace him. Yep, same story. So, question, Christians. Where do you think the Nazis got the idea from? Who was teaching the Nazis how to handle the Jews? The Muslims. Just Google the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. The Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. He was the one teaching the Nazis how to deal with the Jews. Right? Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. He was best buddies with the Nazis. Right? Look here. You see it? This is the number one guy of Jerusalem. He was teaching the Jews, sorry, the Nazis, how to deal with the Jews. The Nazis learned a lot of him from him. The same guy, you see, this is Hitler. This is not my picture. I'm just the messenger, man. So Muslims taught the Nazis, right? They taught the Nazis. Yep. And the proof is in front of you. So this is basically the Pact of Amr. I gave you the link. Feel free to study it and use it. Guys, use it. Don't stay ignorant, please. Life is too short to not get well informed. Right? Especially since they claim that Islam is the fastest growing religion. Right? <laughs> so do your homework, guys. And if we go to chapter 9, guys, if we go to chapter 9, the same chapter, right? Chapter 9, Ayah 49. It says, of them is he who said, so a companion said to Muhammad, and I'm going to show you the tafsir too, grant me leave. So the companion is saying to Muhammad, please grant me leave to stay at home, right? So the companion is saying to Muhammad, please let me stay home and tempt me not. Surely it is into temptation that they thus have fallen. Lo, hell verily is around the disbelievers. So what is basically the Quran saying here, guys? Let me show you what the Quran is saying here. If we go to the tafsir by Azbab al nuzul by Al-Wahidi, chapter 9, ayah 49, same ayah, right? Chapter 9, ayah 49, from the chapter of the sword. This is the chapter of the sword, right? If you ask Muslims, this is one of the last chapters of the Quran. Maybe even the last one, right? This is the violent, most violent chapter of the whole Quran. And this is before Muhammad dies. He received this, right? In his last years. So, if we go to the tafsir and we try to understand what is happening here, we can read the following. This was revealed about Jad bin Qais, the hypocrite. So this guy is nothing but a hypocrite. This is because when the messenger of Allah, Allah bless him and give him peace, was preparing for the battle of Tabuk. He said to him, O Wahab, would you not like to have scores of Byzantine women, the yellow blondies? Don't you want to get the yellow blondie wives of the Roman Romans who we will defeat? Uh-oh. And men as concubines and servants? Look what Muhammad is telling him. He said, oh, so this guy is responding. Oh, messenger of Allah, my people. So <laughs> this guy is telling about himself. My people know that I'm very, very fond of women. Right? And if I see the women of the Byzantines, of the yellow blondie women, I fear I will not be able to hold back. So do not tempt me, tempt me by them. So basically he's saying, guys, if I see the yellow blondie women of the Romans, I cannot hold myself back. I'm going to rape them one by one. 
I will take them, you know, so this guy is, is warning Muhammad basically, please do, do not tempt me, man. You know, I can't, I can't hold myself, so please let me stay back home and allow me not to join. So this guy knows he's a filthy, disgusting creature, he knows, right, so he's, he's telling Muhammad, please don't, don't tempt me, man, right? And look at, the, look at what Muhammad is saying, you know, you will get women, man, you will get sex slaves. Blonde sex slaves, man, you, you never tasted a, a yellow blonde before, man. Come with us, come fight with us. And Muhammad is calling him a, a liar and he says to him, I'll allow you to stay. So then he's called a hypocrite. You see? <laughs> a hypocrite for not raping yellow blondie women, right? Uh, and this is the same chapter, guys. Same chapter, but Tafsir from Ibn Kathir. Tafsir from who? Ibn Kathir. Right? Let me scroll back here, you see? Same chapter, 949, Ibn Kathir. Not my Tafsir, this is THE Ibn Kathir. So Muhammad saying, Would you like to fight the yellow ones, the Romans, this year? He said, Oh, Allah's Messenger, give me permission and do not cause fitna for me. By Allah, my people know that there is not a man who is more fond of women than I. Same story, right? So we showed you from two tafsir how this guy, if he would have gone to war, he would have raped the women one by one. I fear that if I see the women of the yellow ones, who are the yellow ones? The Roman, right? The blonde Romans, I would not be patient. <laughs> I would not know what, what, how, to, how to react, right? Please, Muhammad, don't do this to me, man. Oh, the guy, you know, I think he had foam on his mouth, right? Like his prophet. Lusting for these blondie women. Disgusting. I mean, Muslims. If you're not convinced that Islam is nothing but a sex religion, then I don't know what this means then for sure you must be blind or you are evil like your prophet this is why you're being a muslim right islam is nothing but a sex religion slavery capturing slaves sex slaves especially the yellow blonde blondies right of the romans and if that's not enough when you go to Jannah, you will get even more women, right? This is nothing but a satanic religion. Empty promises, right? So this is all for jihad. Everything is jihad about Islam. Only thing that you had to do as a Muslim in the time of Muhammad is fight, fight, fight. The work is for the Jews and the Christians. Let them work. Let them pay you jizya, right? From their money, you can go to war. So, I think this, you know, this is more than enough proof from the Quran itself, right? This is only Quran, guys, to show you the real hidden face of Islam. This is the true face of Islam, right? If we go to the Hadith, Muhammad saying from Sahih Muslim, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih Muslim, Hadith number 22. Always with an echo, right? Maybe some Muslims didn't hear it yet. It has been narrated on the authority of Abdullah b. Omar that the Messenger of Allah said. So Muhammad said, right? I, Muhammad saying, I have been commanded to fight against people till they testify that there is no God but Allah, that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, and they establish prayer and pay zakat. And if they do it, and if they do it, their blood and their women, their property, their money are guaranteed protection from me on my behalf, except when justified by law and their affairs rest with Allah. So if you, if you don't accept me as a prophet, right? You don't accept Islam, you don't convert to Islam. I will fight you, I am commanded to fight you and your blood is not protected, your property, your women, your money is not protected from me. So he will kill you, right? Aslim 
Fataslim. Remember the letter that was sent to the to the Roman Empire, guys? Aslim, Faslim, Taslim. Faslim, Taslim. Convert or else. Become a Muslim or else. If you become a Muslim, you then you will receive peace. Convert, then be, receive peace. Right? This is the letter that Muhammad sent to the Roman Emperor, right? Then he got his ass handled to him, right? So, we showed you, guys, the true face of Islam today, right? Are there any questions? Are there any Muslims? Let me set my Skype open. Maybe a Muslim will call me. Maybe he, he can try to refute me. Do we have any Ustaz? I challenge you to show me where I lied in my today's live show. Do we have any Muslim? Are there any questions, guys? Are there any questions? Is there any Ustaz who thinks that he has the knowledge and the courage to face me in a debate? Be my guest. Saltra one is asking, RC, what is the punishment if Muslim not pray five times? Muhammad killed him? Well, uh, Saltra, Muhammad was warning Muslims that he will put them on fire if they don't come to prayer. So what do you think? <laughs> right? Muhammad was warning people, Muslims in this case, if you don't come to the masjid prayer, he will burn you alive. Is that an enough answer? Do we have any Muslim guys? Rob Stubborn, uh, call me man, call me, refute me. You sound like a nice Muslim. Call me, refute me. Let's see who is full of ego. I'm full of ego because I'm teaching about the real Islam. I'm full of ego? Wow. Oh well. Any Muslim? Do you have any Ustaz? Who will bless the, us with their presence? Do we have any teacher of Muslims? Do we have an Imam who is hiding in the bushes? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, the Coptic Christians really, my friend, good as you mentioned them, these really, these people really suffered a lot when Egypt was conquered by the Muslim. Those people really suffered a lot. They lost their country. And if that's not enough, they even lost their own language. Right? And I'm not even talking about how many, how many people died for Christianity, for their faith in Christ. Right? Yeah, come give us da'wah. Show me how Islam is the truth, man. Maybe I lied. Maybe you can correct me for in front of everybody. Maybe you can silence me so I can close my YouTube channel for forever. I mean, we are doing this for a long time and still no Muslim ever refuted us. I wonder why. Right? Either you're going to accept that Islam is nothing but an unrespectful, intolerant cult, right? Forcing people to become Muslim or die, as we showed you. Aslim, right? Teslim, convert or else, or you die. You don't, you don't become a Muslim, you will die anyway. If you are a Jew and a Christian, we will force jizya on you. You don't pay jizya, we take your women and we slaughter you. Right? Only the coward Christians, only the coward Christians will pay jizya. Right? Any Muslim? Yeah, Muslim only debate kids. I mean, why is it when we have an Arabic speaker like me or Christian prince? 
Why are they hiding? Why are they hiding? Are, I mean, do we really look that sc uh, scary to them? Why, why? I mean, we have more, almost 100 people watching, right? Are you telling me we don't have one Muslim? There's no Muslim who can face me in a respectful discussion. I mean, it, it doesn't need to be a violent one. I mean, come on. If you are sincere, I will be sincere back to you. There's no need to uh, be disrespectful, right? Depends on how you behave. You know, this Rob, Rob Stevern, are you that a coward to hide behind a Western name? I mean, you call yourself Rob? Are you such a coward to hide yourself behind a non-Muslim name? Coward? Didn't Muslims... Last time, guys, you remember in my uh, earlier, one of my earlier live shows, didn't we discuss that Muslims are forbidden to copy the Jews and the Christians? So, Mr. Rob Stevens, why are you copying the Jews and the Christians? Shame on you. Yeah, you're a Christian? Yeah, it shows that you are a Christian, man. Clearly shows that you are a Christian. Yeah, we have seen that before, guys. Many Muslims, when we used to sit on Porto, guys, with Christ Christian Prince and others, many Muslims came to play. They came to our portal rooms and said, we are Christians trying to play us, but we are not stupid, right? After one or two minutes, we already knew that they were nothing but false Christians. They were Muslims hiding behind a mask. So from your fruits, from your fruits, we know you, right? Yeah, 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 you're a Christian. Do we have any Muslim who is not a coward to hide behind a Christian name? Do we have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge? <clears throat> Are we out of Muslims again? Oh man. So we have only text terrorists left online uh -oh. what a sad story man are there any questions from our dear brothers and sisters in christ yeah only one dislike seems that we are doing an amazing job right the muslims guys the muslims actually agree that they agree with us about the true face of Islam today, right? They know that we just refuted their lies and deception, right? Abdul keyboard jihadists, <laughs> exactly. Any Muslim? I mean, Muslims, Muslims. I have asked this question before. I mean, Muhammad. Right? Muhammad in 625. Where was Allah when he lost the defeat? Why did Allah not protect him and his men when he was suffering from the defeat? Why did he lost again in 629 from the Christian, those filthy Christians? We are Najis, right? We are filthy. Remember? 928, chapter 928, we are filthy. I mean, why would Allah not protect Muhammad and his followers from the filthy Christians or the filthy pagans. We are Najis. Think Allah was taking a nap, right? He was taking a nap in 625 and 629 during those battles. Right? Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's live show again this was our second live show today seems that muslims don't have the courage and the knowledge to call me i mean my skype is open man what's wrong with you muslims right you know right they know right guys they know right they know they can't handle us because we are going to spank them one by one 
where are their teachers? Where are their imams, right? Who have been telling them Islam is so beautiful, so peaceful. Where is your imam? Where is your istaz? Hmm? Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Guys, please don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. Also, click on the notification bell to re receive notification when we go live. Yeah, guys, do you, do you, did you notice lately that actually the internet is the biggest enemy of Islam? Look what the internet has been doing to Islam, guys. Remember, in the time of Ahmadidat, right? Ahmadidat, there was nothing called internet yet, right? We could not access the sources that we have access to right now, right? People actually didn't know much about Islam. So Ahmad had basically a free way to do what he was doing, right? No one was there in the early days to refute him because not many people knew about Islam. But when Salman Rushdie wrote that book, The Satanic Verses, you saw a very, really, really big movement starting against Islam, right? Refuting. People were finally were educating themselves about Islam, right? So it started basically in the 90s, the early 90s, right? In the last years of the 80s, right? Remember, he, the guy is still hiding. Muslims put a large amount of money, a large sum of money on his head. And the guy, the poor guy is still hiding. Millions, they put millions on his head, right? To capture him and kill him. You will get millions. So we taught you guys that to be aware when Muslims say there is no compulsion in religion, this ayah has been abrogated, right? Just go to the tafsir and see that it is actually abrogated, right? By Allah himself and Muhammad was commanded to fight the people of the book. You see, it was abrogated, right? This was before the message of Allah com was commanded to fight the people of the book. But then Allah saying there is no compulsion religion was abrogated. And then the prophet was commanded to fight the Christians and the Jews according to chapter 9. So what abrogated this ayah guys? Chapter 9. This chapter, chapter at Toba, the chapter of the sword abrogated, like I said, at least, at least 120 peaceful Meccan ayahs. Right? Like this one. There is no compulsion. Like Surat Al-Kafirun. Right? Remember Surat Al-Kafirun? I think we need Christian Prince for that. He loves to mention this chapter always. In the name of Allah, the beneficent of the merciful. Say, O disbelievers, I worship not what you, what you worship, nor worship you what I worship, and I shall not worship that you worship, nor will you worship that I worship, and to your religion... And to your religion and unto me, my religion. This chapter, this complete chapter, guys, chapter 109, Surat Al-Kafirun, has been abrogated by chapter 9. The same chapter 9, abrogating a complete chapter. So, chapter 109 has been also abrogated. Look how many verses, guys, of the Qur'an. They are to be found in the Qur'an. Muslims still use them against us, but they are using them as deception, as the qiyah. Because they are not even allowed to use them, but they will because war is deception. The art of war, right? So by this, guys, I want to thank you for joining in. Thank you for supporting us. God bless you, right? <clears throat> Sorry, my screen was not showing, but you get I, this is chapter 109, right? The chapter that I just mentioned that was abrogated by chapter 9, right? Let me scroll back. This chapter abrogated, this entire chapter, 
right? That Christian Prince always loves to bring up. This stupid sounding chapter. The whole chapter doesn't make sense, right? Tolerance, right? Teaching tolerance. Unto you, your religion, and unto me, my which has been abrogated, right? An entire chapter. What a shame. Allah changing his mind. But we know it's Muhammad himself acting like Allah, fabricating ayahs for his own personal agenda, for his own power and sexual desires to please himself. Right? He's, he's like a king. He doesn't care. So he will fabricate ayahs for his agenda. He was nothing but a warlord, right? Thank you for watching, guys. See you next time. Don't forget, Jesus is Lord. Every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Muslims, please leave this satanic cult. Because Islam is nothing but a fake satanic cult created by a madman, a warlord. Someone who lusted after his sexual desires and power hunger. Thank you for watching guys. God bless you and your families. See you again very soon. Jesus is Lord and Islam is false.